Hi class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in this video, we are gonna explore another example of the limit definition of a derivative, but this time we're gonna look at a rational function. So just a reminder of our limit definition of a derivative formula, and this time we're gonna suppose that f of x will just be five divided by x. Okay, so let's see how this looks a little bit different than previous examples. So I will start finding the derivative f prime of x will be equal to the limit as h approaches zero of, we start again with finding the x plus h as a new input into my function f. So the f of x plus h needs to go here. Well, since my function is five divided by x, my f of x plus h will look like this, five divided by x plus h for that part, okay? Just for that part. And then I will subtract off the original function f of x, which was just our five divided by x. And of course, per the formula, all of that is divided by h. That is in my entire numerator, five over x plus h minus five over x. Now, I'm just gonna pause for a second and mention this. Look closely at where I put the x plus h. Be careful not to think that it's just a matter of adding h to the function or some other version of this. Often students make these crazy mistakes, so just be very careful about where you're evaluating. Here we knew in our original function we had x in the denominator, and if I'm replacing that x with something, like an x plus h, that entire denominator should have that x plus h, which we do here. Okay, so now we have to think to ourselves, all right, I need to do some algebra to this to simplify all that I can so that eventually, eventually we should no longer have h in our denominator so that we can actually take the limit as h goes to zero. If we were to take the limit as h goes to zero right now, it would be problematic to have this h in that denominator because we would essentially have a zero in the denominator. Okay, so I reflect back in my numerator and notice I have two fractions that are being subtracted. And we know that we can subtract fractions if I have the same denominator, which I don't right now. So I can do some work though to make those have the same denominator. And I'm going to choose that my denominator actually be an x plus h multiplied by the x. Okay, multiplied by x. So here we go, let's have that be our new denominator. We have the f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero. And again, I want my new numerator to look like this, the x plus h times the x, okay? And I want that in both places in my fraction in the numerator. So I have this as subtraction here, and here I have an x plus h times an x. And of course, by the way, all of that is on top of the H that's still down in our lower denominator that's here. And now I have to figure out what my new numerators will be for each of these two fractions. So back to this, I have five divided by X plus H. Great, I already have an X plus H in my denominator. I'm missing this factor of X. So if I'm gonna multiply the denominator by that x, I need to also multiply the numerator by the same x. I already had a five though in my numerator, so that becomes now a five times x or five x. In my second fraction, I had an x to begin with, awesome. I have an x right here, but what I'm missing is the factor x plus h. So if I'm gonna multiply in the denominator by an x plus h. Here, I should also do the same to the numerator. I already had a five in my numerator, but now I'm gonna to have to multiply that five by an x plus h. So in doing it this way, we are building what's called equivalent fractions so that we can actually now subtract these fractions together. Okay, that's my next step. F prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero. And here my numerator, since I have the same denominator here of those two fractions in the top numerator, let's go ahead and write that as one big fraction. So I have now five x, this numerator here, subtract five times x plus h. 
And of course, all of that is still over its denominator of this x plus h times x. And of course, all of that is still over our big denominator here of x. And I'm going to thicken this line here so that you recognize that in this top numerator, that is one giant fraction in the numerator and just a little old h in the denominator. Okay, now that we have this piece, what we can actually do is just continue carving away at the algebra. Let's actually take our negative 5 and distribute on both of those terms. So now we have f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of 5x. Then I have a minus 5x and distribute on the h, I have a minus 5h. All of that, though, is still the numerator to the denominator of x plus h times x. And that is one giant numerator to the bigger fraction, which is has a denominator of h here. Okay, so far so good. I hope you notice that in this case, I have a 5x minus 5x subtracts off. Now what's left is just minus 5h in the numerator. I have now at this point, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of a minus 5h divided by x plus h times x. And now right here, I'm going to do a wonderful step where I realize, you know what? The whole time we were dividing by h, there's another way to handle that. And instead of dividing by h, I can think about that, by the way, as being h over 1. Well, instead of dividing by h over 1, I can simply just multiply by the reciprocal of this h. So I'm going to take my fraction that I have here, and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of h over 1, which is, in essence, 1 over h. And that is the same thing that we've been doing all along with just numbers. If you took 5 divided by 1 half, for example, you would turn that division problem into a multiplication problem and multiply by the reciprocal of that denominator 1 half. So same idea for this. And that is very advantageous for us to do this because now hopefully we recognize that this h next to that negative 5 and the h down here in this denominator actually divide out. So what I have left is f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of, now I have just negative 5 in the numerator, divided by this denominator, x plus h times x. Not quite done yet because I still have not dealt with my limit notation, actually taking the limit as h approaches 0, but now I'm ready to do that. Always in the last step we will handle that. And so now we think, okay, let's actually let h be 0. There's only one place that we have an h. Let's let it be 0. And when we do, well, I still have a numerator of negative 5. In the denominator, I have x plus 0, or just x times the x that's here, so x times x, x squared. So my final result to all of this is simply just f prime of x is equal to negative 5 divided by x squared. And now I can box that and be done with the problem. Notice in this last step, when I went from here to here, I no longer need that limit notation because I have handled the limit. I've taken that limit. Okay. So thank you very much for watching this particular video. We hope you will return for our next example, which will be focused on a radical function. And please click on the Advantage icon to subscribe to our channel.